Hello all, and now we're going to start our discussion video on Bishop Berkeley, the 18th century uh, thinker, and his uh, project towards um, the denial of Newtonian materialism and um, his metaphysical idealism. So if you are interested in that, then this should hopefully be the video for you. But anyway, I suppose to start off, we would hone in on the project idea of minds and the processes um, to Berkeley, uh, the mind's processes are ultimately the real in that sort of sense that we can't have evidence enough to support that these, um, how you would say, um, material um, conceptions only within our mind's processes we can't actually um, have the evidence of the material out on its own. It is a very, very rough summation, I suppose, of what his project is. After all, if nature has fixed material properties that are on their own and fixed within the world, then what is God's... Um, purpose uh, in the creation uh, as an ongoing sort of um, um, project, if you will, as an ongoing um, creation that he is taking part of, as opposed to setting the laws of materialism, of mechanistic sciences, and um, letting this creation be. And if that's the case, then theism becomes superfluous. Um, you know, if God is indifferent towards his creation because he has, you know, fixed models in the world and doesn't interact with uh, the creation, then uh, there's not much you can make out of you know, the prudential ideas of consequence and other uh, values in the uh, theistic tradition. And um, so I think that really would be the sort of go around on what Berkeley uh, hopes to do um, towards Newtonian physics um, by attempting to undermine that uh, they objectively exist, then we can um, argue out of this that these mental processes that ultimately we do not actually apprehend on our own in that sort of sense that, um, you know, these sensations, we don't, you know, to say I want to, you know, sense, uh, you know, a certain particular smell or something like that. Um, you know, these uh, mental processes have to have an origin from somewhere. It's a causal sort of explanation of God and a reemergence of theism despite uh, the 18th century and uh, the scientific revolution that is going on around him. And so um, he wants to expand upon Locke and is you know thinking of ideas and the reflection upon them as ultimately uh, you know representative uh, epistemology you know bestowed upon us from uh, God, um, and so um, these sort of questions or inference uh, out of this is what Berkeley uh, wants to hone in on. And uh, there's a lot of ramifications, of course, for this uh, to see with, um, you know, what's to come with uh, phenomenalism and, um, you know, the idea that there's appearances of um, what uh, the material or objective reality is uh, towards us. And you can trace that back here with Berkeley and his sort of idealism of... Um, the mental process of uh, what um, matter appears to us through uh, particular things. Um, and I suppose really this is kind of a, a sort of Berkeley uh, done, uh, harking back to, you know, the platonic tradition of um, being able to see, uh, you know, through the hierarchy of, of being actually to, to, if you really want to go back 
and you know see the difference between you know matter and and non-being um but anyway i suppose now we can move towards what how berkeley is really going to do about this project and that is um you know you can't um he wants to get at Locke and basically say that you can't have these sort of abstract ideas about um, Newtonian physics out on their own. You can have particular uh, sensations and observations about uh, such things, but they don't actually ob objectively exist uh, out on its own, or that we can't actually uh, see the evidence for it, or uh, in this case, um, if you really want to be a uh, to, to really get at what Berkeley is doing, he's really honing in on Locke's idea in our last video about um, something I know not what. Uh, Berkeley's saying, well, if you don't know what it is, then uh, that's a problem. And he wants to undermine that and say there isn't an empirical evidential basis for material um, objects. And um, just like how... Um, the Newtonian properties of matter, force, and time and space, you can't actually have ideas about something like, um, you know, force or uh, the material. Um, you have particulars about an apple, you know, falling from a particular tree and the observ uh, what's observable out of that, but you don't actually have a sort of apprehension and an abstract idea of it in and of itself and so obviously Berkeley is a sort of nominal simple idea sort of Lockean if you want to uh, look at it that way that um, you know these mental causes of sensation uh, to Berkeley obviously is coming from another mind um, because you know we can do these sort of Lockean generalizations of course and that's sort of you know, we have these sort of same ideas of sensation and if we have these sort of uh, consensus that we can build um, out of it, then obviously this must come from some sort of supreme mind that gives us these uh, generalizations and language and um, the uh, consensus towards involuntary ideas like pain. Um, you know, how, where do those involuntary ideas come from, of course, is what Berkeley would ask. Um, and I think to really wrap up this rough video on um, how Berkeley is undermining Locke and the uh, Anglican tradition of uh, how, uh, empirically uh, um, doing each other, um, I suppose uh, to really uh, summarize and end here, we would have to look at his you know, nominal understanding of language, Berkeley's going to say that you know, Locke wants to name and represent uh, in his theory of language, but, you know, there's more to language than that, and obviously there is much to be done in the ways of the interpretation of that language and the use of that language, um, and different meanings of particular things at different times uh, you can't build a universal uh, abstract consensus out of that. Um, and so if you can't do that, then what are you going to do about trying to associate primary qualities, uh, especially in extension uh, towards matter? Uh, you can have, um, you know, particular ideas about what, uh, you know, the whiteness of my shirt is, but, you know, you don't have an idea of, white off on its own. You only have the referential of other particular things and the difference between them um, is what Berkeley uh, would say. And out of that, you can't really form abstract ideas. They're all in particulars and in particular interpretations of language as well. But um, yeah, this is just a small technical video um, on Berkeley. Uh, he's very fun to really throw at people who don't really have that much interest in philosophy as it is because um, you know empirical idealism uh, if you don't really know what uh, these sort of arguments and project he's trying to go at 
than running around and saying, hey, this bishop in the 18th century, he uh, had a lot to say about uh, the material um, consensus not actually existing, as it were. Um, you know, you get a lot of stares and people don't uh, really understand what idealism is and the mental uh, processes and its representation um, as uh, not uh, supplying sufficient evidence to support an objective uh, material world. Um, but yeah, this was Berkeley and uh, there might be another video to come to maybe go uh, into more particular uh, arguments that he makes. Um, but um, yeah, I just wanted to cover the rough supply of his uh, replies to Locke. And uh, now we'll move on to Hume uh, after this. But uh, thanks for watching.